Let's just wait for two more minutes before we start.
So yesterday when you were talking about herbs, now I'm drinking tea. Oh, Green tea. Green tea with lemon grass and ginger. So at home I have also mint, sage, oregano, lemon grass, and ginger. No, no, just for the kitchen garden. So where can I get the the dragon seeds? Oh, they are all over. Oh, yeah. They are they are available. We can try them. Oh, yes.
No, no, no. Uh, beer, boat, you know, uh, lamb, yes, and then, then eventually people started eating pork also. Um, so yeah, so that's the, if you are interested in the catching pork. And there are many potential opportunities for pig farming. Uh, you can do fattening business. Okay. Uh, means to say you buy piglets and then you fatten them for maybe four, four months to five months. And then you sell them you know, when they are mature. Or you can also have your own breeding stock. You produce your own piglets and then you fatten them. Okay? Another would be you breed and then you sell the piglets. That would be another business that you would, that you can also venture into. And it's a very uh, lucrative business. Alright. Uh, in fact, I don't know if it is true. I heard that uh, even farmers choice is stuck their breeding section. They don't sell breeds, uh, you know, piglets and book. They just rely on their suppliers or okay, their guys to uh, their pigs. And then you can also do breeding and then say, sell uh, the gilts, okay, those four months, five months old, you know, female, really for breeding. Or you can also sell the horse, the male. And lastly, you can sell only, you know, you breed only boars, and then you sell now sperm for artificial insemination. That's another business that you can venture into. Okay. And, uh, I think uh, the demand for for this is is increasing, uh, knowing very well that uh, if you have the right genetics, okay, the right breed, because farmers are continuously looking for the right genetics. But for the purpose of this presentation, uh, let me just focus on the patent. Okay? The patent. That's the purpose of our discussion for today. Suppose you wanted to start a pig farm and you wanted to patent. Okay? Yes. Okay. All right, so what is organic pig technology? So it's a natural way of raising hogs. Dramatically improves the income of farmers. So, based on some of my interview or farmers here in Kenya, I think on average they're earning about two thousand to four thousand per head. Okay, um, uh, removing all the costs already of feeds, labor, water, electricity, debt, you know, and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, they will get about 2,000 to 4,000, okay? Let us see if we can reduce or increase that profit by way of organic methodology or system. So it's a win-win technology that will benefit the farmer, the consumer, the environment, and of course the neighbor too. Okay? So for, first, uh, so what we say in organic farming is if you're not getting a return of say 50% or more return on investment, okay? You are not actually in business, okay? The people are, you know, are getting rich are the, you know, the traders, the middlemen, the butcheries, and so on and so forth, not the profits. Including the consumer, why? Because we're going to provide, you know, healthy meat, no growth hormones, no antibiotics, okay? And the environment, why? Because, uh, we, we protect the environment, okay? We, uh, we don't have pollution, okay? It's uh, smell-free, odor-free, rather, okay? And of course, you will save your neighborhood. <laughs> the, the biggest problem of pig farmers is the smell, okay? We inconvenience our neighbors. So that's the biggest problem. So what we are saying is why we are doing uh, business in terms of big farming, you should not be, you know, violating any, you know, community uh, and, you know, environmental laws. It is an effective microorganism. So, partly, maybe I will discuss about EM. EM is a Japanese technology, okay? 
uh, it was developed in Japan by a professor called you know, agriculture. And he put together three different microbes of bacteria. Uh, one of them is lactic acid bacteria, the one that we use for yogurt, cheese, okay? And then he also added yeast bacteria, we use for fermentation of beer and so on. And of course, phototropic bacteria, okay? Uh, which, which he extracted from roots of plants, okay? So that's the EM technology. So the reason why there's no smell is because of this bacteria, okay? Because of that bacteria. Because good bacteria will simply suppress the bad bacteria. No bath, no foul odor, no commercial feeds, no chemicals, no artificial growth hormones. Because we can produce our own growth, you know, promoter. Eh? Uh, but maybe later I'm going to discuss how we're going to produce natural growth promoter. Okay? A proven technology that can easily be adapted by every hand raiser in the world. Okay? So in the Philippines, for example, okay, we are a pig eating country because we are 90, 95% Christians, Catholic, okay? So we are a pork eating country. In our meal, it's always that either pork or fish because we are an archipelago, okay? Archipelago. So organic farming is widespread in the Philippines because there's a law. Okay, that promotes, advocates, and regulates organic farming. Okay. Uh, so as I mentioned, our main focus in this presentation is just a pathway. Okay. So first is selection of stock. Okay. So when you're buying piglets, be sure that those piglets have no deformities. Huh? Uh, when you look at them, you know they have uh, four legs. <laughs> just exaggerating. But you know what I meant. Huh? And then bright eyes, very important. So one of the indications of the healthy piglet is they have bright eyes. Okay. We don't want the uh, piglets with uh, eerie eyes or with uh, you know speck in their eyes. Huh? And then no diarrhea. Uh, you can add an O. Okay. Shiny and short hair. Yeah. Shiny and short. Another indication that a piglet is is healthy and still young, okay? There are some people who, you know, whose pigs are already three, four months, okay? And they still call them piglets. That's not piglets already, right? I mean piglets, 45 days, okay? 30 to 45 days. In fact, the, the, the sooner you wean them, the faster they grow, okay? Some farmers, they don't know how to wean. It's very easy, by the way. At 15 days, you started rubbing already solid food on the teeth of the mom. You understand? Why? So that they start, you know, tasting solid food on the teeth. On the, on, on, you know, when they're two weeks old. And then, pole pole, you reduce what? The food intake of the mama, so that now he, she will not produce enough milk, right? And if they're not getting enough milk, then they're going to look for what? Solid food. That's the technique. So now you can wean them early. Are we together? Yeah. That's the technique. If you want to go in that business, eh? And then no rancid order, of course. And you ask also the... I hope that when you are sourcing the piglets, that the, the source farmer is keeping records, okay? And the, the piglets have been vaccinated. By the way, in organic farming, vaccination is allowed. I repeat, in organic farming, vaccination is allowed. And they are already castrated, and they are also being warm. Okay? So those are some of the things that we need to remember when you are buying piglets. Now, of course, we're, need, we're going to, since we buy them, we bought them from other farmers, we're going to transport them. Now, we have to remember that newly transport piglets are full to stress. Huh? Stress. So, so if our piglets are stressed, chances would be they might not be able to settle very well. And maybe if we are unlucky, 
your piglets will die. Okay? So that will be a loss of investment. Okay? So avoid feeding them for at least two hours when they arrive at your farm. Okay? So just to let them relax a little bit, so now they are able to settle down. Okay? In fact, in, uh, in the winning technology, when you win the piglets, initially, there is what we call as this uh, winning lag. I don't know if you're familiar with the word, winning lag. In between the, the winning and, you know, they normally, in terms of uh, weight gain and so on and so forth, you know, it's, it's stagnate or sometimes it, uh, the weight uh, reduces, okay? It's because of that time between they're separated from the mom, okay? Um, worse if you're going to transport them and bring them to your farm. It's even worse, okay? So we have to be very careful here. So, prepare energy drink. You can mix 100 ml of fermented fruit juice, or if you don't have FFJ, you make molasses, okay? So FFJ is simple. Uh, one kg of any fruits that you can find in your farm, banana, pineapple, juta pineapple, pao pao, watermelon, okay? So one kg of those fruits, combination, and then one just one kg of molasses also. All right? That's your fermented fruit juice. Are we together? Yeah. That would be their multivitamins so ahead because banana is very easy for ash. Hmm? And so on. Hmm? And which is whatever is available, okay? So 100 ml for every one liter of water, just to rejuvenate, okay? The the piglets. Okay, the design of the pen. Well, in organic farming, uh, we said that you know as much as possible, we provide them an opportunity to for them to exceed it, to manifest or to do their natural behavior, all right? So if you want to be certified organic, one of the requirements is, do you have the right environment for them, okay? So convection roof, we need to say this one, okay, convection roof. Sometimes we call it semi-monitor. Why do we have that? Well, it's because it provides continuous airflow. Hot air will escape at the roof. Remember our basic science? Cold air goes down, hot air goes up. All right? Because we wanted to make their uh, you know, living condition stress-free. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, our pigs, just like our people, People, during the day, they always submerge in the water. Why? Why hippos always submerge themselves in the water? Temperature. Pigs don't have sweat glands. They don't have sweat glands. So, that's why, now we understand their behavior. It doesn't matter if it's mud, if it doesn't matter if it's their poop. All right? They will do like this. Why? They have to reduce their body temperature. They have to lower their body temperature. All right. So now here comes now the the saying that pigs are not really dirty animals. They are clean. If you give them the opportunity with a spacious, you know, pen, they knew where to eat. They knew where to sleep. They knew where to drop. You know. You understand? In the, even in the natural world, okay? Even in the natural world, they knew where to be, okay? The only reason why they do like this and they look that is because of the body temperature. Hmm? So maintain two square meter area per head to attain desired size and weight. Again, it's because of uh, we wanted to provide them with stress free environment. So not only that, Pigs are clean animals. They're also very intelligent, okay? Very intelligent. There are some videos in the UK where they have, you know, experimented on, you know, and determined the, the intelligence of the animal. And they're very intelligent. 
In fact, the way I explain is, you know, they are very intelligent in such a way that, you know, if you give them a miserable life, they're going to make your life also miserable, okay? How? They will not grow, okay? They wanted to prolong their stay. <laughs> but if you give them a stress-free environment, they will forget that at the end of the day, they're going to be good. Yeah? They just grow fast. <laughs> That's how I exaggerate the story, okay? So this should be, you know, your key picture design. Right? So cold air will come in, and then hot air will come out. Okay? And we're going to use now the heat meter system, or the DBS. It's a Korean technology. Okay? So in organic farming, we combine two technologies, the Korean technology and the Japanese technology. Korean technology is they use now deep meter system, okay? or deep bed, DBS system. Okay? So that's the, the, the design. So three feet deep beddings of sodas, rice hull, and a combination of many others. Right? And then you can have hollow blocks too. So now the, the urine will be absorbed by the sodas and the rice hull. Alright? But the poop in organic farming, if they have no di diarrhea, okay, the poop are solid. Okay? And then you can collect them every day. It's very easy to collect. Okay? So the beddings of the pig pen, you can use now sodas, cocoa wire nuts, or rice hull. I would recommend rice hull because they decompose slowly. They are more durable. So in fact, if your farm is very close to Muella, oh, you have all the raw materials. Okay? In, and also there are many millers there, then one of the ingredients in our feeds is rice bran, okay? This is a source of carbohydrates for them, okay? And then combine it with soil. Why do we put soil? Carbonized rice, hull, by the way. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, Premise Farm, okay? I have a video on how to do carbonized rice, hull, okay? We make the rice hull charcoal, okay? Charcoal, source of minerals as well, okay? Plus, charcoal, again, basic science, it has some uh, property to absorb, it? yeah, smell, okay? And then we put salt, okay? And then EMAS, again, the EM technology, okay? EM technology. Soil is a very good ingredient, uh, the source of minerals as well. Um, in the soil, uh, our organic pigs are able to get their iron already. The reason why we inject iron here is because in the conventional pig farming, we have cemented glory. You understand? They don't get their iron naturally. But in the or in organic farming, iron can be, you know, uh, the soil could be a very good source of iron for our pigs. Okay? <clears throat> so procedure, you just dig one meter or say three feet, okay, and then uh, mix several batches of base sacks of sodas or rice sacks of cocoa wine, one sack of soil, one sack of CRAs, and then one kg of salt, sodium chloride, okay, again source of mineral. Again, salt has the property of what? Exactly, all right? Then layer them until such time that you have already a, a you feel the three meters, or the, the, the three feet, okay? And then afterwards, you sprinkle or you water the surface with 10 ml EMAS per liter of water, okay? And then rinse, spray the beddings one liter square meter of beddings. So again, you're introducing the good bacteria, okay? So diseases are overcome by this good bacteria. In fact, even in, 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 in growing on vegetables at home, what I do is, when I buy seeds, okay? Or, what do you do, by the way, when you buy seeds? You plant them immediately? You soak them first. What do you soak them? Uh, 
Lori? Yes. Me, in my case, I'm using EM. Okay, because the bac good bacteria has many functions. One, they inhibit, they, 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 they enhance the growth rate, okay, the germination rate, okay, the good bacteria. And also, they, they neutralize any pathogens, okay, the soil borne diseases and so on. Okay, so that's what I use EM. This farm, which I where I train in organic farming, uh, they welcome about uh, 3,000 visitors every month, and they have no problem of biosecurity. Why? Because religiously, every day, spray EM in the environment. You understand? Always reintroduce the good bacteria. The only thing that they prohibit is for you to smoke inside the farm because of that tobacco disease. You understand? Otherwise, no stepping on something, no nothing. Everybody is welcome. But every day we do this in this great area in the environment. Okay? So this is a 12 acre farm and they have accommodations there. So it's a one week training program. So every day, every morning we have a session, a classroom like this. And then in the afternoon we do farm activities. Okay? So he taught us the technology, the EM and the Korean technology. He taught us the business side and the management side. Okay. All right. So deploy the pigs. CRAs, hard works, good microbes for long-term stability, health, and water quality. Okay? So salt provide trace minerals. Salt provide biodiversity soil of the microorganisms and be eaten by the animals. Natural source of iron too, okay? For, for the pigs. So, now, one way, uh, those who are, anyone have experience of rearing pigs already in the past? No one? So 85% of your cost will be pigs. Sometimes even 90%, okay? Because these animals eat a lot. Even yesterday when you were discussing about the cow, that cow is a beast, no? It will continue to eat. Many farmers, you know, give up farming, pig farming, is because of that problem. They continue to eat, and they don't gain weight. All right? So what do you do? <laughs> Just dispose everything, eh? Just dispose all those pigs because, you know, well, there is something that we need to remember, the feed conversion ratio, okay? I mean, it's feed conversion ratio. So for every kg that they eat, how much gain or weight are they gaining? It's very important. You have to do that. All right? And then you also have to determine the average you know, daily gain. Every day, how much are they gaining? But now at the end of, you know, if you have gotten them, if you bought your piglets when they were 45, 45 days, okay? When they are six months old, Okay, including the 45 days, okay? They should be 90, 100 kg, okay? Because if you sell them at 60, 55, you lose. They have eaten so much already, okay? They have eaten so much. So you can produce our own formula uh, feeds, okay? So there are only three macronutrients that pigs require. So they need carbohydrates, protein, and fats and lipids, okay? So these are the three macronutrients that we would require. So for starter, uh, 70 kg, for example, of carbohydrates, okay? So you can use rice bran, or if you don't have rice bran, you can get uh, what? Which other sources of carbohydrates? Maize bran, okay? Maize germ. Uh, all right, and then in the Philippines, because we are one of the highest producer of coconut, okay, we have a lot of copra meal. You know, copra meal when you compress or press, you know, that's the byproduct of extracting the coconut oil. Okay, so a substitute here in Kenya, what do we have? Soya. Do we have soya? Yeah. Or what else? Uh, sunflower. 
Yeah, something like that. So you, you replace that one whatever is available, okay? And then of course now, uh, no, so yes, it can be a source of protein, okay? Fish meal, but I would recommend you use duckweed and azola, okay? Duckweed and azola. Duckweed is 40% protein. Azola is 30% protein. These are aquatic ferns which you can build a makeshift pond, one foot deep only, okay? And then you put cow dung, or in the in vermiculture, we use a vermicast, okay? The fertilizer. On the surface, maybe two to three inches deep of fertilizer down below, and then put water, okay? About eight inches. So now, the pond will be about 10 inches deep. And then you put the solar there, okay? And they will just multiply every two to three days. So, if you want to rear pigs, all right, be sure you have source of protein, okay? The source of protein. That would be uh, 25 kg. So that's about uh, 25 to 30 percent of your pigs already. You save, okay? And it's free as compared to hydroponics. Huh? Hydroponics is good, by the way, you can also save. But the problem is you keep on buying barley seeds. Isn't it serious? Yeah, you keep on buying barley seeds. But this is a Zola. The moment you put one kg there, then you just fill the pond. Every day you harvest maybe half of it. After three days, it's full again. Okay? So I suggest you make one, two, three pods. Eh? So Monday, you harvest here. Depending on how many pigs you have. So if you want to harvest maybe uh, 50, 60 kg every day, then at least you must have uh, uh, maybe 3 meters by 50 meters, like that, okay? Pond, you harvest 50 kg. Tuesday, you harvest from here, you understand? Wednesday, harvest from here. When you go back to the first pond, it's filled again, by the way. You'll never run out of source of protein, okay? That should be. Uh, how to reduce your cost? Because if you buy everything, it's expensive. Uh, omega, for example, is expensive because if they are also eaten by people, right? It's expensive as a source of protein. It's expensive. Other people, they use the BSF, that's also fine, right? They also use African nitrolas, that's also fine, as a source of protein, all right? But uh, I would suggest the only another reason why the droppings of the pigs are very smelly is because of animal-based feeds. Okay, I repeat, because of animal-based feeds. But if you use plant-based, all right, you dramatically reduce the smell of the droppings. Are we together? Yeah. So why not use plant-based source of protein? And then two liters of uh, any, okay? FAA. What is FAA? The fish amino acid. Okay? Fish amino acid. So how do you make fish amino acid? Uh, you go to the city market, you buy tilapia, and then you ask them to fillet, okay? Okay? And then tell them, can I carry with me the head, the bones, the intestines, the gills? You understand? And the scale. Are we together? Mm. When you return home, so, so imagine, suppose we have one kg of those fish waste and just simply one kg of molasses. Just ferment. You are actually extracting amino acid from that fish, which is very rich in lysine and methionine, which are very important, you know, amino acids for the growth of animals, especially for their muscles. Are we together? And of course you have, I, remember, I mentioned FFJ. FPJ is similar to FFJ, it's just that instead of using fruits, you use now leaves. This is also now your natural growth promoter. Go to your farm. 
look for a plant wherein when you cut today, tomorrow it has already sprouted, you know, sprouted. Means to say, that plant has the ability to grow very fast, you understand? Because that is the characteristic that we wanted to extract from that plant and give to our work, what? Give to our pigs, so they will grow fast. One of them is banana, the small banana. When you cut, tomorrow it has already what? Right? Sometimes in the Philippines, they have, people are superstitious, see? So, in, especially in a very tight uh, presidential election. <laughs> they will cut two banana shoots, okay? This one is for this president candidate, this one is for this another president candidate. Let us see who's one grows That one will be the winner. <laughs> Superstition. Well, <laughs> it's because of that. Another would be sweet potato vines. Isn't it? When you pluck the tip of the sweet potato vine, it will develop, grow new shoots. Isn't it? Yeah. So look for plants like that, like that. Okay? And then do now fermented plant juice. That will be now your natural one. Grow for more time. Okay? Even bamboo shoots, you know the bamboo shoots? Yeah, I think uh, there is a growing interest now in bamboo grow, you know, farming here in Kenya. So, bamboo shoots are also like that. Uh, the 2 kg carbonized rice hull, why? Source of mineral. You know, sometimes, you know, if I were you, if you raise pigs, every time I go to Moria, by the way, to buy rice, when I pass by many many sellers of maca <laughs> charcoal along the way. I buy from them the, the dust. Those things that they cannot sell. Huh? Oh, you know, those things, your pigs will eat like ground nuts. <laughs> and they will love it. Yes, they will love it. They love it. Source of minerals for them. We don't know that, right? By the way, there's another ingredient that you can use later. I'm going to show you. And then rock salt of salt, and then we must uh, 30 liters of water, no chlorine. By the way, this is the assumption that you're doing wet feeding. Huh? The assumption is you're doing what? Wet feeding. Okay? And then silage. Ah, part of the silage that you can use water high acid. Water high acid, this is very abundant in the lake. Why are we not using them? Water high acid is 18% protein. Alright? Water high acid is very rich. For some people, they are considered to be what? Venice or the, you know, destruction. But, uh, they can be used as silage, okay? So the analysis is that about 20% protein, fiber is about 7.67%, calcium is about 0.2%, only. So, so if you notice, in the starter feeds, protein is 25 kg. Now as they grow, oh, this is the feeding, okay? So 700 to 100 to 180 feeds daily, okay? So 50% in the morning, 50% in the afternoon. In terms of snacks, you can give them vegetables once a day only, 12 noon, all right? In terms of snacks, give them snacks, okay? So grower, the same formula, but now we have reduced the what? The protein, 15 kg. Understand? The same formula, but we increase the silage. We increase the silage. So as they grow old, reduce the protein. Okay? Because we want them to gain weight. Maintain the carbohydrates. Alright? And then for finisher, ah, feeding 1.5 to maybe 2 kg by the way. Feeds daily. 50% in the morning, 50% in the afternoon. In terms of snacks, give them twice a day. That's why again. Before you start even pig farming, you grow forage crops in the farm. Things, plants that you can grow so that now you can give them as 
food sector and for snacks for them. Okay? Because in their nature, they love to eat. All right? There are some farmers who are trying to reduce their feed intake because, of course, they eat a lot. The more, they will not grow. Okay? Just like in, uh, just like in uh, poultry, you know, the moment you reduce the feed in, the food intake of your layers, okay, the more the egg production will decrease, okay? The same is true with pig farm. All right, for finisher, the same, but now our protein is lower, and then we increase now our, you see now, one of the ingredients of silage, aside from the banana shoot that you use for FTJ, even the mature bananas, trunks, if you are a shredder, okay, you can use that as an ingredient for your silage. If you have napier grass, make them as silage, okay? Yeah. What else are abundant in Kenya? In your farm, maize, maize uh, might be difficult for them to mm -hmm. to to digest. Okay. Hey, no, hey, no. The 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 dry hay, the dry. All right. So for finish here. Approximately, they will eat 3 kg every day. Again, in terms of this uh, snacks, now ad libitum. Okay? Ad libitum. No limit. You just feed them. Keep back secret. One week before you sell your pigs. I hope you have a banana plantation. Give them ripe banana. Okay. <laughs> they will gain weight, by the way. Especially when the trader is about to come. Oh, it's a big banana one. <laughs> <laughs> you can get additional 2 to 3 kg, you know? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, it's a banana, by the way. Ripe banana. Ripe, ripe banana. Even those bananas that are about to be rotten, you know? Overripe. Uh, give them, by the way, give them, they will just devour, you know, eat banana. They will gain weight. I'm telling you, they will get it. You get, when you know the traders are coming already, you get a whole feed them with them. If you can you know, get additional 2 kg, that's something. Eh? So that's why I'm saying you grow uh, crops that will help you, you know, reduce your feeds. Eh? So fermentation of hog feeds, what are the benefits when we ferment in organic farming? Okay, preservation of raw materials. Okay, they, you preserve them because of the good bacteria, lactic acid bacteria. Okay, in fact, it can last months and even years. Okay, especially in anaerobic condition. Okay, no oxygen, no air. Uh, detoxification. Mm. Say you collect vegetable uh, from the market. And we know that they have been sprayed on by so many chemicals. India, mm, if you ferment them using EM, all those uh, you know chemicals will be neutralized, and then eventually they are detoxified. Okay? Yeah. So the good bacteria will overcome those uh, chemicals that are sprayed on the the vegetables. Okay? And then improve digestibility. Why? Why do you think you said the uh, yogurt is good for us? Exactly. Because it improves our digestive system, isn't it? Yeah. The same is true with pigs. The problem sometimes is when the pigs eat, alright, and the, the retention of the nutrients is very low, and they just simply release them, isn't it? But, you know, the yeah, good bacteria will enhance in what? In the digestion and the retention of the nutrients. So now it will go to their system. It will help them grow. Mm. Okay. Nutritional value of raw materials goes up. They said you multiply the nutrients by two, you know, two times or three times when you ferment. Okay, it's very nutritious for your animals. 
So how do you do that? Well, just mix EM1 or EMAS, 200 ml, and then molasses and water, okay? In a 20 liter of water. And then no, you just spray, or you, you know, you ferment, maintaining what? 30 to 40 percent moisture. If you don't have any, any instrument to measure the moisture content, this is the technique. You grab one, okay? You squeeze, all right? Be sure there's no water coming out from your hand. You understand when you squeeze? And then when you release, it will retain the shape. You understand? You have achieved 30 to 40 percent moisture content. Are we together? Because by the moment you squeeze and there is a liquid coming out from your hand, <laughs> the moisture content is high. You understand? <coughs> mm. Alright? So that's just a technique that I can give you. Mm. And then of course now you use now these containers. So you, anaerobic fermentation. Alright? Or if you don't have this, this you can use plastic bags. Ferment now for two weeks. It has sweet sour smell, then it's ready because of the molasses and the EM. So this is just an estimated cost. I don't know if my estimate is correct. In the commercial, you get uh, 28 per kg, 26, 25. I don't know if this is correct. Price in the market. All right. So. If you can get 40% savings in terms of feeds, that would be a big boost for farmers already. Okay? Big boost in terms of savings. Alright? So optimizing your profit, make your own silage. Okay? So for every 5 kg of vegetables or foreign crops, 1 kg of molasses, and then 60 ml of EM or EMAS, all right? Uh, I think molasses, how much is molasses now? The last time I bought uh, 20 kg is about 700. The 20 kg. Yeah. The same price? Yeah. No? Okay. This is very cheap. So 700, 35 per kg. It's very affordable. All right, so how to prepare? Simple, the same uh, in the fermented uh, plant juice, okay? By the way, I will give you this. Eh? So you can use spinach, kale, lettuce, cabbage, tricantera. Tricantera, sometimes they call it madre de agua, okay? It's 30% water, okay? It's a shrub. Hmm? Cassava leaves. Oh, we have plenty of cassava here, by the way. Hmm? Yeah, we have plenty of cassava growers. Water hyacinth, moringa, pak chong, or super napier. I, I have, I have trichantera, I have super napier. Super napier is from Thailand. The local uh, napier is about 8 to 10 percent protein. Okay? But the super napier is about 18 percent. Okay, it was developed in Thailand, and I brought here in Kenya. No. I have a home. <laughs> because I'm feeding it to my rabbits, okay? I'm feeding it to my rabbits. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes. All right. And in terms of production, I think, uh, I just forgot the number of tons per acre, okay? Higher yield per acre inch, okay, for the super nuclear. You can read about it, research on it. There are so many literature available on the internet about super nuclear. Are you growing it? Come again? Are you growing it? I have, I have, I have a few cuttings at home. Okay, I told you my business model is sharing the cuttings. Okay, sharing the cuttings, and I allow farmers to grow them. You know. In a large scale. So the phase out feeding schedule, if you want to convert to organic farming, all right. So maybe on week one, 75% commercial feeds, and then you 
you know, mix 25% of their kids, okay? And in week two, you do like that. Until such time on week four, you have already converted completely to what? Organic kids, okay? Organic kids. To some extent, by the way, uh, I asked this question before. This is in the Philippines. Suppose that the pig is really sick and we use antibiotic. Can it still be considered organic? Yes, he said, as long as when the antibiotic was applied or administered, it is on the middle of its lifespan. So now after two months or three months, all right, the, the, the antibiotic has already been you know, released from its system, but not on the last stage. Are we together? Yeah. Be very, very, very careful. In the Philippines, it's illegal to use the word organic if you are not third party certified. Okay? I told you there's a law. <laughs> there's a law that advocates, promotes, and regulates organic farming. Okay? So if you want to use the word organic in your label and your pigs, you do like this to organic, ah, you have to be third party certified. Okay? Otherwise, it's illegal. So drinking water, mix the drinking water with emas and molasses, dilution rate in emas is one is to one is to one thousand. Okay? So we just say one liter of emas, one liter of molasses, and then one thousand liters of water. What are you drinking? Okay? Because molasses is also a source of energy. So it's probiotic, it has the digestive and immune system. At the same time, you are controlling the odor. I told you. We don't want to inconvenience our neighbors. So many farmers uh, shy away from organic farming because they said it's so complicated. There are just too many things to do and so on and so forth. Well, uh, I hope that the next will be uh, we would encourage farmers to go for organic farming. So for in terms of maintenance, replace drinking water every day, spray emas on the bedding, sweet pen, and surround it. Again, every day. Okay? 10 ml for every one liter of water. Always reintroduce the good bacteria. Okay? Now, suppose you have pigs with diarrhea. So you want to produce your own electrolyte. Okay, mix. So one fourth teaspoon baking soda, one fourth teaspoon salt, three tablespoon molasses, and one liter of water for diarrhea treatment and to avoid dehydration. Okay? Now, I don't know if you are familiar with this plant. We have plenty here in Kenya. Yeah. And this is a natural warm weather. Natural, we water. In fact, when we were kids, we were eating the fruits when, the, uh, when we were kids. Not the leaves, uh, the fruits. <laughs> because they're just everywhere. And I'm telling you, uh, I hope you're not this story. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's a natural deworm. Okay? It's a natural deworm. And this is available. Okay? I don't know how you, what's the name that, you know. We have in locally we call it Ipilipi. I don't know what's the name here. Oh, even in our estate, here at Airport View, when you enter, there's it's available. You can give them once or twice a week. Remember part of their snacks? Hmm? Part of their snacks. So important notes in growing natural pigs, bad odor is from what? Wet beddings or bad feet, okay? Especially, that's why in the feeding trough, ensure that your feeding trough, you know, should look like this, huh? your feeding trough. Not like this, why? Because sometimes there are some feeds that will be left there, and that will be the cause now of, you know, uh, rotten feeds, and that will be a source of diarrhea also for them. 
At least this one is very easy to clean. See here? Yeah, so at least this one, six inches. This one, maybe uh, in terms of diameter, maybe uh, 10 to 20 inches, something like that. So a meal, copramine, and lacquid are high protein. Worms are the highest. 70% protein. The African night protein. The rest is fat. Very deep. No wonder in the natural, in the natural world, why do pigs root, by the way? Why do they root? They're looking for the okay? in the natural world. They're looking for uh, anything that they can eat on the ground, okay? Mostly they will look for the worms. 10% copra meal only, because otherwise if you increase it so much, they're going to have diarrhea, okay? So different pig pen design, as I just show you, like that. So indigenous materials, we have hollow blocks here. This one is created with, okay? Feeding trout, you can have like that. If you don't have, if you have the budget, you can use metal, okay? You can the watch. What do you need Also like that. Indigenous materials, you can, I don't know, this is also available here in Kenya, right? Yeah, it's made in bamboo or even in a piece of wood. Right, hollow blocks at the bottom and then in the materials on top. You can do that. Now, this is commercially, you can do commercial pig farming. So this is a commercial scale, pig farming, organic. With the buildings that are not cemented. So, so what would be uh, the optimum um, population in a commercial? commercial All right. Organic? Remember, we said maintain two a square meter per pig, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you have, say, for example, a four by five, that's twenty. Okay. So uh, now you have ten pigs. Okay. 10 pigs per 20 square meters. Or you can even have, uh, if you're really tight, at least 1.5 square meters per pig, right? So you can increase this maybe to 12, 13, all right? Something like that. Again, we don't want uh, overpopulation, overcrowded, because again, that's the time when. They're noisy and stressed. But if you see them sleeping like a baby, I told you, by the way, they dream. <laughs> when they sleep, they dream, they snore. Hmm. Interesting animal. Yes, yes. So for this natural veggie, yes. do you need to excavate it every so often? Good question, Judy. You excavate when you harvest. All right? Say on the sixth month. Huh? Mm -hmm. On the sixth month. And you're going to harvest the pigs. They are partly decomposed already, and almost fully decomposed. That goes now to the next part of our business that is out of the production of what? Fertilizer. Okay? The production of fertilizer. So you just scoop the food, you scoop. Yes. And then it yes, yes. remains. And then if it's really going to sun, mm -hmm. you tap up. You know? Tap up. You, so. you top up. Yeah, yeah, you tap up. So, so you don't dig it out. When you harvest the pigs. Yeah. Yeah. When, yes, yeah. when you harvest the pigs, we sell them. So six months. Then now you harvest now all those bedding. And now give to your worms, or now you can use them as already. Uh, my case, if I'm the one, I'm going to use them as part of my potting mix. You understand? It will loosen the soil. It will make the soil porous. Mm -hmm. 
because of the sodas, no, because of the rice oil, okay? Mm. And then I will mix it with vermicast. Uh, at home, my, my potting mix is 50% uh, vermicast, 50% bokashi. Okay? I call this bokashi. Because it's bokashi is a Japanese terminology for organic fermented matter. Or fermented organic matter. Okay? That's bokashi. So monitor type. And this has been achieved already. I think, yeah, this one, three hundred months old. They're big. They're big. Okay. 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 And they're grown naturally. Okay. Is there any, any farming? Can I bring this apart from me? Okay. That's why you know. You see that how. how <laughs> How relaxed their life is. Okay. So I, I, I really wanted to promote organic farming because uh, I think uh, it will make the farmers uh, you know, more profitable. Let, let's let's uh, uh, hear income statement. Uh, say for example, we produce uh, 90 kg, lightweight. Uh, say, and then the unit cost is 225. Okay? So, somehow, approximately, we we'll get 20,280. For feeds, up to maturity, they will need about 350 kg. Okay? And then, based on our estimated calculation a while ago, the cost per kg is about 15 then we will have about 5,200. Uh, piglets, including the transport, maybe you can say 4,000 per piglet. Okay. Uh, labor, bed, you just need 2,000. Water, electricity, maybe another 1,000. Total expenses, maybe is 12,200. Okay. So, you can have net income of 8,000. Rather than the, the 2,000 to 4,000 that uh, conventional farmers are, are getting. Okay? Because in conventional farmers, this one will dramatically increase. Okay? That will eat up here. You understand? Hmm? If you remove another 4,000 here and make it 9,200. Alright? So this is where we're going to. To, to to make the saving in order to, to make better progress. Okay? Plus, of course, we did not mention tons of organic fertilizer. <laughs> Alright? That's something that most farmers are forgetting about, you know, pig farming. Okay? They forget about other byproducts. But suppose, suppose, let's just say we add additional 20% markup because we are selling organic feeds. Eh? We should. To compensate for that extra effort and labor that we put in. Eh? So we can say, so 270 instead of 225 per kg. Okay? So 24,300. And the same calculation. Now, you have dramatically increased your profit per pig. Okay? So for 10, you have 121,000. Right? And plus tons and tons of organic fertilizer. Because of the pandemic, by the way, one of my students, his name is Ted. Alright? His uh, fertilizer, vermiculture business has really big commercial scale already. I can give this one if you want. All right? So, he's producing now. Uh, it's expanding its operation in terms of fertilizer. In fact, he's selling 50 grams, 100 grams, you know, in the supermarket. Murmicas, fertilizer. 
and they said they sell like you know like like nuts. Very profitable okay, for fertilizer. Now this is the triangle of success for pig farm, and you cannot dispute this one. Number one, you must have the right genetic, the right breed. Look at me. No matter how much you feed me, I will not throw in the mouth. This is my genetic breed. Alright? The same with pigs. No matter how, you, how much you feed them, if they, you know, if you don't have the right genetics, they won't. Number two, the right nutrition. Okay? Again, balance of the macronutrients and micronutrients, okay? And lastly, right management, okay? So again, we, as much as possible, provide them with a stress-free environment, right? So now, they, they grow fast. about sales and marketing. We always ask people, you know, you know, what business are you in? In which business are you in? What are you selling? Okay? What are you selling? <coughs> so if you are selling, say for example, good health, then by all means you are committed to the process. You are committed to the technology, you are committed to the system and to the protocol. Alright? But if you are in the business of just simply making money, well, people, it would be very easy to slide and go back to the conventional farm. Mm -hmm. That's not always been the case. Even in the conversion of, say, you are so used before of conventional farming using of synthetic fertilizer and so on. The first year when you convert it, automatic, no doubt about it, your yield will go down immediately. Automatic. And that one year is very crucial because if you are not focused and you are not uh, determined, you will just shift conventional farming again. Because the reason why the production is going to go down is because we are still trying to rejuvenate, you know, to bring back to life your soil. You understand? I think it was, was it Kariuki who mentioned yesterday, every time we use synthetic fertilizer, what do we do to our soil? Yeah. So the pH level one, it becomes a CDC. Yeah. Yeah. So we are still trying to rejuvenate and bring back the lives, you know, this organic matter lives in the soil. So eventually, first year, it's like that, okay? But if you do it again next year, I can guarantee you. Okay? So your production now will be equal to when you're using conventional. On the third year, you're so fast already. Your, your production. So that was the challenge, by the way. That was the challenge. Yes, Eddie? Now, my son has a big farm. Yes. 
And um, I just wanted to know that, that we've been trying buying mothers from different farmers. Is that advisable so that it gets different breeds? Uh, it has a contract with farmers to yeah. The last couple of months, I think he's been buying pigs from Pika. Mm -hmm. And he's lost, uh, he's lost about 20 years. Oh. Um, that doesn't in the structure for um, shifting from one breed to another. Mm -hmm. It's gradually been yes. just changed. Yes. And 20 died mm -hmm. in a week ago. No, uh, that, that's fine. Just to so avoid interbreeding, you know. How would you ensure you have the correct breed? Is it buying from different mothers or Bra buying from reputable farms. farms, okay? <laughs> that really keep records and they have this line of how do you call that one? That's yeah. also terminology. Yeah. 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 Yes, exactly. Yes, 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 yes. It's very important. I don't know what I think there are the most common uh, Breeds that we have here in Kenya are large white, young yeah. grays. Juro? We do have juro here in Kenya. Uh, what else? Uh, Berkshire. You have pure white? Yeah. So either large, large white or young grays. Okay? That's what you have. Yeah. Some they breed, interbreed. If you interbreed, say, large white and the juro, it's very nice combination. Because uh, each breed has its own characteristic, okay? Uh, I think it's the large white that are very good moms. Mm -hmm. Mama? Oh yeah, because he had the mother which is... <laughs> yeah, there are some mama that they don't want to, you know, to, to, to milk their, you know, their, their piglets, their, their okay? Yeah, something like that. And sometimes, uh, if you want maybe big muscles, maybe the, the large white would be a good, so if you mix the breed, okay, so now they grow big and produce really meat and they have also the characteristic of being a good mama, that would be a good, you know, combination. Yeah. Could just go back and slide on cost. On cost, yeah. And because just looking at speaking of yeah, forget this one. You are not referring to me as well. Okay, okay. Looking at the whole thing, it is quite labor intensive. Yeah, it is labor intensive, huh? When I look at this course, especially with labor and vet, that could really work out when we're growing up. You know, when we're, <laughs> we're providing free labor for our parents, yes. and then they get the profit. Yeah? But otherwise, you know, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. But, no, 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 no. If you only have 10 kids, do not hire people in one Do it yourself. You understand? If you have only 10 kids, because if you're going to have 10 kids only and you hire someone, all your profit will go up. Yeah. You understand? And the bet, in organic farming, we, I just put an amount there, but it, you know, I don't need a bet. Why? Because I, my assumption is, my, I have healthy kids. All right? You understand? That's my assumption. I hear you. My problem is that I, I know I know I, I can go to Mombasa for holiday and all that. So I'm looking for money that can let me do that. It's not just passion. You yes. Know, I could do this for passion, yes. but I'll do it one season, two second season I will do it. Yeah, so it, it needs to scale up. Yes, I know. In a way that it can mm. give you money. Yeah? Mm. And that's how I'm looking. You know, like even when you said the bedding, you said three feet. Eh? Yes. Just putting that bedding in that commercial unit alone. I mean, that's about. Those are even many dollars. Yeah? Of just that bedding. Eh? Yeah. By the way, by the way, I, I totally get you. You know, your laborers, if you have people, mm. they are not there 24 hours. Okay? Mm. Mm. So I assume that after feeding the pigs, huh, collecting, the droppings and then feeding them, that's it. You have nothing to do. So what do you do with them? Do other farm activities, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that now it can dramatically contribute into the reduction of the cost. Okay. Because if that, that's the only thing that they are doing, you're mm -hmm. telling me. Mm -hmm. 
Because I, I was just trying to get the minimum weight, minimum weight is now. Yes. And then um, 10, 10 pigs will pay that happened. Maybe mm -hmm. 10 pigs will pay one month. Mm -hmm. I need to do this for six months. So I need six pigs to pay that pattern. And then, as I said, I want to go to Mombasa. I know my house. So I now need another whole one pen with six, six pen just starts with the last. For me to get profit, it's like I need another mm -hmm. And then when I put this amount of pen, But you don't change every, every, every day, okay? So you can have some contractual people to come mm -hmm. during, you know, the, the, the beginning of the, of the process. After that, you need only one paid person now, just to clean and feed. So what's the minimum uh, number of uh, mothers for you to, to have a good ROI, you know, break even? And, and, and I know in the industry, some people say that you, if for you to make some good money, you need at least a minimum of about 20 mothers. You know, some if you, are, yes, you want yes, to yes. make a good payroll, you need at least if you if you have uh, anything above 30 mm. mothers, mm. then you have a good inflow and you can actually now even sign a contract with there are many commerce stories or whoever else is yeah. um, living. So in terms of profitability, uh, what's the you know the, the number of some say 30, some say 20, but what's the, the optimal number? For you to say, I'm actually a big farmer, I'm making money. Again, what are you saying? Again, again, thank you, thank you. Yes. Remember what my, my premise when I was discussing this. Uh, we are in the patenting business. We are not in the breeding yeah. business, okay? That's a totally different business model, the breeding, okay? Oh. Uh, to be honest, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, into breeding business, okay? Oh. So I'm into the patenting business, more of a patenting business. That's my business model. So, but yes, that, that, that's possible. So say for example, to, to produce 10 to 12 or 14 piglets. So the mama will, uh, the gestation period is what? Three mm -hmm. months, three weeks, three days. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a gestation period. Yeah. So this is a, in every year, how many? Twice? Twice? So let's just say twice, okay? Because you want your mama also to rest a little bit, no? Uh, while maybe before weaning and then rest, and then now we reserve again. Yeah, so, again, again. so if you want to have a constant supply of piglets, then you plan. You don't impregnate all of them at once, otherwise. <laughs> Uh, you will uh, have a very crowded, and then uh, at the end you don't have supply already. So you plan. So if you can have, say, uh, if you want 30, so 10, 10, 10, something like that. All right? Or you can have uh, 8, 8, 8, 8. All right? Every so, month Eight. Yeah, so you know, what I mean, eight moms, 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 you're serving eight moms, moms. To, to have 80 piglets, more or less 80 yeah. piglets, okay? Then, uh, then you find that, and yeah. then there's, there's another business, I want you to, I want you to consider, because this is very big business in the I hope I can show you. It doesn't show. Are there people who just do uh, breeding whereby you get the piglets and sell, and they don't, they don't keep the pig, they, they yeah, yeah, the Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. And that's then you, you uh, on the other hand, when you're buying them, uh, yeah. fatten, yes. do you have some requirements because they don't provide the family? Yes. So all you need to do is to make sure they are castrated and vaccinated, nothing else. Mm. So you just pick them and mm. move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have, so you, you don't have, between the two, you prefer the patterning than mm. the breeding. Mm. Right. Because I'm, I'm more after the fertilizer. Yeah. That's where the money is for me. Yeah. Remember, oh. I'm not limiting on pig farming alone. I'm limiting, uh, I'm extending into another business uh, venture. I, I told you, I like, produce tons and tons of fertilizer. I told you that. So if you're just limiting into the pig farming, 
it might not be worth you know so much with your time and effort, but you're forgetting other businesses. Oh, because if you're if you're doing that for one winter, yeah. you are done forever. Yes. How much that then you know, after that, after six months, yes. you can have your organic. Yes. 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 Yes.